everyone. Welcome, welcome back. We're having some fun here. We're going to do some loose watercolor painting. Um, we're going to do like a uh, kind of like a rainy scene in the city. Maybe uh, it could be a, your favorite city in your mind. We could imagine we'll just think about a city scene, cars going by, people walking by, and it's raining a little bit, drizzling maybe, some fog, you know, kind of an interesting feel to it, you know, uh, perfect for watercolor. So I'm just going to sort of jot down some ideas here. The first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to need some uh, sepia tone for my painting here, which I don't normally use, but I'm going to try some of that with the uh, washes. So I just use some double stick tape here on the back of a, a large pan and I just put some double stick tape on there and I'm just going to peel off the the plastic like that. And then I will put it in my watercolor palette just to secure it a little bit. And then we'll put our sepia tone paint in there. I have to look around for that. Maybe I'll do that on our next break. So the first thing we can use, we can use just a like in a retractable pencil, like a number nine or a number seven, or a regular um, office style pencil like this here. I'm gonna use this, I think. And I'll just kind of roughly sketch in. It's gonna be more of a loose feel, uh, more of sketching than real uh, tight contour drawing. We're gonna do more of a sketch feel to it, just to get down our main ideas of our um, scene that we're gonna paint. This will be in a portrait format, so it's more or less a portrait style versus landscape where our uh, paper or our rectangle is on a landscape and horizontal feel. It's more of a vertical feel for this painting. And um, I just have a masonite board with my arches rough paper taped down to that. And it's, I have it on um, masonite and then I have some tacky, uh, I think this is, um, like a carpet roll for the bottom of carpets for non-slip carpeting for throw rugs and things like that. So I put some of that, I tape that down on the bottom. This way I can have this um, not moving around so much. It stays pretty secure. And then if I want to lift up, I can let some paint flow around on the, on the board as I work with it. And we'll start out. We'll get our, some basic sh uh, shapes and things going. Um, so I'm going to start out top top of my paper. You know, maybe this is about a quarter of the way across the top. I'll start with my buildings. There'll be some tall buildings here on the right. And then um, we're going to slope down a little bit and then we'll do some more. We'll just kind of step these down a little bit like that and then we're going to have maybe a a dome style. Very uh, loose, sketchy. I'm not trying to get everything super accurate. And some more. And I think that's about good. So we have some city buildings here. And then I'm going to have about if this is halfway, the midway point on here, on the center of the page, I'm going to go a little bit below that middle point, and I'll just make a little horizontal line. We'll say this is like our, uh, like the horizon here. Make a super light sketch across there for the, this would be like the distant road in city street here. And And then at this point, I think I'll come back over here to the right and I'll maybe just sort of, I'll do a figure maybe here. So I'll draw a head shape and then shoulders. And maybe this is a business person and they're walking and I'll just get the, uh, maybe the head and the shoulders, mostly. And then here, maybe behind is a car. So I'll just rough in a little car. If 
there and then maybe over here there's another car and another one here and I'll just get the basic idea of a car shape in the back windows and I'm not trying to be too incredibly uh, detailed just a little bit of And we're going to go across this way a little more. Maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have a crosswalk coming across here. So I'll put some lines for a crosswalk. And the lines get a little closer as they go into the distance for the crosswalk. And we have a larger white line here. So we'll rough that in loosely later with our paintbrush. So Basically, we're just going with the sketch first, a light sketch, to get down the basic uh, where I, things are going to be and a basic idea of our composition that we're going to paint. But most of the work we'll do is with our brushes and our paint washes. We'll do this uh, in a glazing technique where we're just going to start off with the light washes of the sky and the buildings in the distance. And then as we get closer to the front of the painting, we'll use um, the additional glazings. We'll use darker... Uh, tonal values and we'll use thicker paint less water more paint straight from the tube and we'll go through that we'll follow along as we go so here um, I'm going to uh, get a few more figures in over here figures are always exciting in a painting and I'll do a figure here Maybe there's an umbrella. And then the figures under the umbrella. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to scale everything exactly perfect. If you can kind of get a good Feel for things, and you can always do a little erasing and re-situating some things on your paper once you get going and you're doing some um, some sketching in of figures. You you can do a little adjusting if you want. So I think this looks pretty good. You know, we have a figure here, here, another one here. And then just again loosely put in there sketchy because once we start painting with the brush we'll we'll get the details of these figures if we, you know as we go as we paint and um so these will be shadows coming down and some shadowing here some reflections on the road here and then we can also we have maybe some buildings in the distance here as well and it's going to be a painting with lots of splashing and water lots of watercolor washes so It'll be more of a fun painting. I'll just add a few more details here and there. Closer we get, the closer we get to here, the, the more details. So we might have a few more larger windows over here. The windows get a lot smaller in the distance as we go into the distance. Everything gets smaller. Smaller windows, smaller figures closer to us, larger figures, larger cars. We can put another car here. OK, 
Okay, that looks fine. This will look good. And then over here, I think over here, we're going to have a, a street light. There. With some lights on it, a couple signs. And we'll make this interesting looking here. And maybe over here, and the same thing, maybe over here we'll have another light here. And this might go up like that. We have a flagpole on there. Might be a a local uh, vendor has their flag up close to their stores, and I think this is good. So this is the sketch, um, not incredibly detailed as you can see, just roughing in the basic idea of things. A few windows here and there. These would be rough indications of some windows if we want to add them in, but we can just leave it watercolor wash too and not be too critical of where our windows are. We can kind of, we just have some indications of some windows, some doors at the ground level here. We have our street here. So our street level is trailing this way. The lines of the crosswalk here is going the same flow of the cars into the far distance, which we cannot see really. The far distance here is in the behind these figures, so we're uh, we're fine leaving it like that. And let's see how it goes. We're just getting everything now to the point where it's good. Um, I'm looking, I'm stepping back, I'm looking at this a little bit, stepping back from my board. Looks fine, this is plenty of information so that we can start painting and getting our uh, watercolor washes on. So let's get uh, prepped to do our watercolor painting now. We're going to do our first glazing. I'm going to use uh, three brushes, um, two mop brushes, and then my... Um, I always use this round watercolor brush as well, so I think we'll use these three, two mops and a, and a round brush, and then... Also, maybe we'll use also um, a uh, needlepoint brush. So we'll have a needlepoint brush we'll use as well for finer details. And um, all right, let's get some fresh water and I'll be right back. I'm gonna also fill in some of my uh, sepia tone paint into this pan and we'll be all set and ready to go. All right, so we're getting back again here, starting back up again. We took a break, 10, 15 minutes or so. Um, I loaded in some uh, sepia tone, Windsor Newton sepia tone. Uh, this is Holbein lavender and some uh, Windsor Newton Chinese white. Those are some additional colors I thought would look good in this painting. Um, so that I'm, those are the colors I'll, I'll add other than my normal colors I always use. And uh, those of you that follow me on a consistent basis, you know my colors are pretty much don't change really at all. And then I'm just going to add those newer colors again, sepia, tone, Chinese white, and lavender. Titanium white would work for this too as well. Um, and I'll take my larger um, mop brush. This would be a number two mop brush. I have fresh, clean water. And we'll mix up uh, some sky wash. I'll use alizarin crimson. Maybe a little purple. And I'm just going to put that on there. And there's some sediment on there from my water pail. No big deal. 
adds to the variety of the look. So just a little bit of alizarin crimson to get some tonal value on the paper. It'll add to the um, uh, it'll add to the interest of the color going on top. So if you add that little bit of tone, it's going to look better. And then through the center section, and I'm putting on a fair amount of water here. I'm really not doing, not sparingly putting on water. I'm really putting it on the paper here. Good. Lots of water, lizard and crimson. Then we'll go in and get our um, yellow ochre. We're going to do some yellow ochre across the center section of our painting here. And again, I go in pretty, pretty decent with that. It's going to dry lighter. Always remember that when you're doing watercolors. It's going to dry about, not quite halfway, but about half as light as when you're putting it onto the paper. And then maybe toward the bottom area we'll use some uh, French ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson with that, and some burnt sienna. And I might leave this area. I'll blot up a little bit of this color. And that's about it. That's the first wash. Simple as that. Now what I'll do is take a quick tissue and I'll maybe blot up a little bit of light, light for the crosswalk here. Just to, I'll be very careful to just gently blot up some more light by this crosswalk and this person with an umbrella. That'll be our focal point. And this is our first wash. So we're going to let this dry a little bit. Maybe we'll take another break. This is the fun part about doing glazing. You do have to take breaks, so that means you can relax a little bit, um, take a breather. You don't have to same with a la prima, when you paint a la prima, you can just stop and go as you please, take breaks when you want. Certain sections you might not want to take breaks, like this here we wanted to do all in that one go, all the way across the whole painting. And if we let this just sit for about a few minutes, maybe five, five minutes or ten minutes, that'll be fine, then we can start going back in and start um, working our upper washes of the buildings here and then we'll work our way down and continue on. I'll use a smaller brush. Next, that's a uh, zero size mop brush for the building since we have the large wash complete now. I'm going to switch over to a number zero mop brush and then I'll even work in the other watercolor brush, my Raphael number six round. And the needlepoint brush we'll also use for some details for lightings and some of the other details through here. And I just noticed that maybe I will just do a little bit of splashing of water where I did this blotting with the tissue because that's already looking... I'd rather splash some water on there and kind of Okay, so I just splashed some water here and there just to give it a little more texture and I wanted to just uh, make sure I didn't make that look too noticeable, that little bit of extra light here. All right, okay, so we'll be right back and we'll start doing our uh, upper portion next. Alright, so now we're uh, we're getting started again. Let's get our let's start using some of that. Now here one of the keys to glazing technique is 
once you have your first glazing on, your subsequent washes are going to be uh, less water. So you saw how heavy I went with the water on the first wash. That's now where we just kind of blot up the water out of the palette. So you don't want a lot of palette. Um, you don't want to have a lot of puddles of water in your palette at this point. You want to dry up your palette. And then you go back in and start up again with more um, water and, and pigment here. But you don't want to have floods of water because we're going with more paint, less, um, less water. So you can see what I have here. And then we'll mix some yellow ochre into that. And um, that looks like a good kind of mix of a little bit of sepia and a little bit of um, yellow ochre for the buildings. So now we're just going to go in and start uh, washing in our buildings here. Yellow ochre, sepia tone. It will be darker closest to us. So now I'm already aware, like, let me get some darker wash here. Because this is closer to us now in the picture. It's more diffused out in the distance here. And this might have been something where we could have waited a little more. You can see how that, can't, we have some of that um, fuzzy look on the wash that we can touch that up a little bit with a tissue even some water we can get some water going let's use some Chinese white um, so I'm going to use some Chinese white and lavender. A little bit of water. And let's I'm just going to add some splashing and perhaps there's some rain. And See how that is still a little bit, uh, but that never hurts a little bit adding some extra water and washes, but it always is good to um, so that's I'm going to add that Chinese white and lavender through here. And maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. We'll mix into the wash here. Looking good so far. And again, uh, this is a fun painting, lots of water. Um, um, I wouldn't worry too much. Have fun with it. Glazing technique takes time to learn. I'm always trying to, once in a while, do a glazing, more of a loose style painting like this. I mostly work with uh, a la prima, and I don't do as much of this style, but it's good to have fun and practice it. And uh, okay, the paper's damp, and a lot of the glazing technique technique is timing your your washes. So we noticed we went a little bit too early with the darker washes here where the buildings are. 
but we just added some water and lavender and Chinese white, trying to make it more of a misty kind of feel through there. No big deal. We made sure we made it darker over here on this side. And then once we um, um, once we have this area dry, we can do more details. But that's at the end of the painting. Right now we're just going to continue working on the, the foreground here. Now maybe we'll go with some French ultramarine blue and some of that burnt um, uh, sepia tone. A little bit of cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. And let's see if we can get some... Uh, we're going to get some of these details here. So we're going to get our road lines here our crosswalk and it doesn't have to be perfect. I would just go very loosely with this like so, like I'm doing. As long as we have that. I think that feel of the lines here will be okay. Looks good. A little bit of dripping of water on there. Okay, and so far we're, this looks pretty good. We need some more sepia tone here with some yellow ochre. We're going to get some of that that's better we let that dry. So we're going to let this dry over here a little more before we keep working on that, but we'll just get a little bit over there so we remind ourselves, okay, we have to go back in here and do some of these buildings on the left-hand side. And I'm adding a little more of the buildings in the distance there. Okay, now we can do some, next I would, again, just as a good, pra good practice here, let's make sure we blot up any puddles. That's okay up there. There were some puddles down here. So I just wanted to mop that up a little bit with some paper towels and then I think we can start doing some straight out of the tube paint. Let's do some sepia tone. Straight out of the tube, no water. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Um, that will be for the uh, jacket over here and some of the people. The figures, we'll start working on some figures. Let's do some cadmium red. That's for um, the uh, figures will use some cadmium red and yellow ochre for the skin tones. And that's still wet there, so we're just going to... So we have quite a bit of dampness still on the paper here. We might want to let this dry a bit. You could use a blow dryer if you want. I might use a blow dryer now and kind of dry out everything because now it's pretty much a lot of, we could do some, we can do some reflections while this is still, well, we still have some, so for the cars, there might be some reflections there. So we'll just put those in very loosely. Maybe we can dry off our brush a little more and get straight paint there. And that 
it just looks good. Some nice reflections in the ground on the uh, pavement here. We're in a city scene. So some vehicles over here. I don't want to be too much. involved in too many details here. That's the thing with these these very fresh looking paintings. Um, too many details can kind of ruin things, so I don't want to get too much detail here. Just some more and uh, that looks good so far. Alright, this is a perfect time. Another break is really good. I just wanted to get this... Um, I wanted to get these nice uh, reflections free-flowing on the paper here. A couple of splashes here and there. And that should be good. So... Alright, perfect time for a break. Let's let this completely dry now. You can see how buckled the paper is too. If I lift this up and I turn it to the side, that might cause a problem, but you can kind of see how it's buckled quite a bit. It's, it's, the paper's buckled a lot and that means there's lots of water in the paper, in the fibers of the paper, so we want to make sure we let this dry. So again, a blow dryer works at this point in time, or if you want to just let this dry naturally for like a half an hour, 45 minutes maybe, even an hour sometimes it might take for it to dry. Depends on uh, how warm the room is you're working in and so forth, but um, at this point it is important let us let this dry, and then we'll start going in and get all the details uh, of the um, figures, the cars, some of the windows and some of the lighting, public lighting, and we should have a perfectly uh, good looking painting. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're back. We let this completely dry. Our paper, you can see it's completely dry to the touch. All the buckling on the paper has subsided, so now I'm back to a nice uh, flat working surface on the paper. So that's the key with glazing technique is um, keeping an eye on the um, the wetness of the paper. So obviously we, we had a little bit of that fuzzy look going on up along our tops of our buildings because we were sort of... Um, adding in some paint and it was still extremely wet at the upper portions of the building. So that's where I think I added a little too much water, but that's the whole thing with the glazing technique is getting the feel for the um, wetness of the paper and the pigment going on to the paper. I'm, ad I'm adding a little bit of um, cadmium lemon yellow over here. I made this Instead of buildings, I decided to make this some uh, some some trees over here on the on the left hand side. So I'm just going to go in and get some burnt umber, sepia tone here, yellow ochre. I'll just get some with the um, rigger brush. Just a few little. Just so that we don't have to explain too much more here. We can see that we have some branches, some twigs, some limbs. And that looks fine. For the left hand side over here, instead of buildings, we just switched it over to some trees. We splashed on some also, I use some olive green. I could add some more of that. It's kind of a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. It's a rainy day, so we're not going to have... It's going to be a little bit uh, 
low key the colors. We're not going to make too much bright colors. So that's the left hand side. That's good. Um, let's start a little more um, sepia tone. Burn sienna. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. And maybe we'll do some uh, I'll use some of that cobalt blue mix over here. Now to paint around the back here, I'm going to use some more of that green and some of this. And we'll do we'll do some uh, more foliage here. And that will work well. We'll paint around our umbrella here. Then we can go in and just do a little more sepia tone. Maybe there. couple little splashes here and there and I'll fade that over there like that so that's fine and we'll use some cadmium red cadmium red yellow ochre and then I dry a little bit off on the tissue and we'll do our face there. We have uh, we have another figure here. And another figure there. So we're gonna use that cadmium red and uh, yellow ochre. Then we'll continue with uh, some more um, sepia tone for our darks. And we'll add in some blue. And here we'll just do, I'm doing this quickly, no fuss. Same here. Dry technique with the dry paper there. Maybe some blue, some cerulean blue mixed in with that. Then I'll just More sepia tone. And I'm just going to work in some details here. And flesh tones, I use the uh, cadmium red and yellow ochre. And 
And some more sepia tone here, maybe some hair. Okay, so we're just putting in some figures here, having a good time. I'm not worried about, uh, I'm going to leave the bottom of the picture very loose with just dripping some water on there. And um, we can continue just looking around at the picture and thinking what it needs. Um, so there's some cars here. I'm going to put some cars. I'm going to make them dark. The uh, I'll get some shapes going and then sort of uh, work in some of the different colors we have. Blues. We have some cobalt blue. Maybe this one's cobalt blue. I'll wet the paper underneath the cars, then I'll let that dry a little bit maybe and I'll add some details to it. But And I'll add some more water to the beneath the cars. And if you don't see a wash looking good when you go in and start working, you just lift it up quick with a tissue or a paper towel, and then you can just wait till that dries a little more. make shadows underneath these cars like reflections but the paper is just a little bit too wet because I just added that uh, water to the paper so so we're doing good here um, I think more sepia tone maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there And I'll do the same here. I'll do the little bit of the reflections here. If it doesn't go right, quick pick it up. Go back in. Maybe some blue in there. That might look a little better. More grayish blue and uh, that looks better. I grade it down a little bit so it's less. Uh, dark and tonal value. So if we do that, that looks better. And we can add some cobalt blue to that for the pants here and the um, figure up front. 
and uh, these here And then we can go with some more figures here. And we can change up the... Uh, and these are a little bit... Uh, these are... They're more in the distance, so they can just be softer. And we can go with a few more. And then the um, shadowing, blue, cobalt blue and raw, or sepia tone. Kind of a shadowy color. Looks good. Just some shadows here. And okay. That's starting to dry a little bit. That's good. Let me add some Okay, for the cars. some tail lights here so we'll get some interesting colors here some beautiful cadmium red to um, make some excitement call you know some exciting colors in the painting Once this dries, I'll put some tires on the car and some shadowing underneath. But for right now, this is looking good. And again, you can always blot up a little bit if you have to. Okay, so we have things really looking good here. We have the darkest darks at the bottom of our painting, where the most of the focal points are. The figure here, the figure here, the figure here. Um, we're going to do some more details on the buildings, but we're really getting to that point where we have a lot of good detail in the bottom portion of our painting, the uh, lower half of the painting, where this is looking good. We're going to get some highlights on some of these fig figures here, on the tops of the heads and the shoulders. Um, and we'll also go and we'll do some more details um, with uh, some more cars and things in this uh, area here in the middle distance. So let's get into the middle distance here. And I'm going to go with um, just some very... very loose and suggestive, uh, ear, you know, for the cars here. Just some... 
and that's the uh, the lights coming from the left. If you find you, you think a car is not coming out that good, you can just lift it up like that. And you can let that dry a little bit and you can go over it. So I noticed that it, I lost the shape of the windows on the, uh, the vehicle. So again, you can blot up quick, one quick good blot like that. And we'll go back in and we'll, we'll get that We'll do this, we'll wait a little while, maybe 10 minutes before we go back and do this because this paper's still damp there. So again, we're looking good. We can go in and we'll get some details here. We have sepia tone, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, cobalt blue. And then we can maybe get in some details, just some... Some window shapes, dry brush, you know, a couple indications of windows. And you kind of want to keep aware of the, th that's the importance to keep the lines. So if you can imagine the angles at ground level all your windows would be going in a straight line down here like so and then as your closest building here all the angles of the window start to turn like this because they're so close everything starts to angle upwards and you don't see that as much in the distance so that's why we just remember that carefully that a um, little bit of uh, Chinese white here. And a little bit of uh, Chinese white and lavender. Looks good for some of these details. Gives it a little bit of a kind of a misty feel as we're it's a rainy day here in the city and we're trying to uh, capture that feel and again my my details are going to get lighter as they uh, go into the distance here so you'll see that I'll probably do less less pigment less paint as we go into the distance here and I'll just start to go a little more loose here I want to Make sure I get this pretty good. And We can follow some lines across here going into the distance, just a little bit to tantalize the eyes going this way. And again, more of the lavender and Chinese white. And that's just going to be for those for the very minor details in the distance.
And then as we get closer, we can do more details over here. Okay. And I'm just trying to flood the paper now with the shadows underneath the cars. A little bit of cobalt blue in there. A little bit of Chinese white and lavender. Let's see what that if that can give it a little more interesting look. Then we can lift up the board a little bit. Splash some water on there. Maybe that'll look a little better. See if I can go with some darker. All right, we're back again. I just had a, uh, a dinner break, <clears throat> which has helped me to actually come back and do uh, some more work on our painting here. This is a really fun wet and wet glazing technique, watercolor, and uh, we really have been working hard on it. And we've also been uh, kind of doing trial and error as we go through our painting. And sometimes when you do your painting, sometimes you have to do some trial and error. Does that make sense? Sometimes you just have to, you know, do a couple of detours here and there if, if things aren't going right instead of just maybe for, for this painting here I almost wanted to stop and say you know let me try it over again or start again from from uh, scratch and redo the video but I figured let me just keep going here and <clears throat> finish up and finish through the painting and a lot of times uh, taking a break or stepping back for a little while maybe 10-15 minutes or half an hour and coming back and looking at it We'll come up with some solutions. So some solutions I came up with was here, these vehicles, these cars here. I, I don't practice cars at all, hardly. I, I used to work on them a little bit, but I tend to not really draw cars all that much. So here I'm not so happy with these vehicles that I um, have in my painting right now. They're okay, but they're really, they're not uh, what I would consider like really, you know, going that great so far. So I figured... I can put another figure in to kind of um, go over the cars and kind of set them back and make them like not so 
important in the picture right now because, you know, they're sort of, they look like they're, you know, kind of sandwiched together here a little bit. They're just, uh, I don't think they look that, that good. So let me take my artist liberty and I'm going to try to see if I can make a figure here. So I'll make a figure here right in the center like this. So if I make a figure here, that'll sort of help this along and make it look more pleasing because of the fact that the cars did not come out so good, so good here. I could have actually reversed the cars, made one coming this way and then one going the other way. And then I tended to think that they were look they look like they were sort of just, you know, side by side driving down the road, which doesn't look too sensical, I guess. But in any case, let's get back in and start working again. And again, this is part of watercolors and part of art. You, you go in and try to um, see if you can do some workarounds and, you know, tidy up spots and maybe, so this here we're going to just do a, we're going to do somebody walking. So we'll make an, we'll make a woman walking down the street here. She's walking along this uh, pathway here, the crosswalk. And um, this might help, so we'll um, maybe we'll go with a um, French ultramarine color here. And we'll add some cobalt blue to that, some gold. And some more cobalt blue. So we're just going to add in a couple figures, and I might add in one more. Um, let me add in another here. And I'll make this maybe a, a male, f a man here, he's walking. I'm using raw umber for the uh, hair and then the suit. So these two figures are walking forward. And I'm just going to blend those together like so. more sepia tone for the for the uh, jacket maybe then what I'll do is I'll use strictly um, paint no water I'll dry off the uh, brush a little bit and we'll just we'll do some dry brushing there a little bit. And then for the woman's um, legs we're going to do um, our just standard flesh colors, uh, cadmium red, yellow ochre, cadmium red. Then I'll maybe do some dry brush as well. I'll dry off my brush here. Some And 
now dry off the brush a little more. Okay, and then we'll do a Okay, so this already seems better. We, we have lots of figures. We I think did a good job here of taking some of the um, focus off the two cars that we had over here. Um, I, I think we'll be able to just leave these two vehicles here as they are. They don't seem to be um, too much of a problem. I think that kind of can just stay as it is. I, I think that'll be all right. So now we're pretty much really in good shape. And again, the main thing is that we're thinking quick on our feet here. As artists, sometimes we have a good painting going along and then a problem happens. We see something we don't like. We say, oh, I don't think I can make this work. But in essence, we did make this work. We put a couple more larger figures in here, which look good. We covered some of the vehicles here, which didn't come out so great. And then we just resolved that issue that way. And that's, that's how we have to approach it sometimes, putting something in, covering something over. Uh, and sometimes we can't do that either. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And But at least we tried here, and it looks like we're successful. We did successfully kind of cover over that area where the cars were. Because there was a lot of empty space, too, if you think about it, right? We had this figure here, these figures here, and we had a, an empty space in between. So this really is, uh, works really well. And um, I think that's fine. We could even do one more figure crossing the street over here. Let's see if we can do that, Let's see if that works, if that can be something that we can also. So I'll take some more flesh color, yellow ochre, cadmium red, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna maybe too, and uh, a little more red. Let's see if we could add in a figure going across here. Okay, we're going to make a figure crossing the street over here. So we're going to get more sepia tone here. I think I'm going to go with a smaller brush. Now the key is making this figure look good. And I'll just add a little bit of shadow there. Straight paint. Okay, this person's walking pretty quickly.
and I'm just trying to get some more Okay, that's not too bad and Good deal. All right, we made another improvement. Very carefully, I'll say. We put a figure crossing the street here. And we did it very carefully. We scaled this figure down um, smaller so that um, it's in between here and here. So it's about the same middle distance or yeah, about middle distance here. Same size as that figure. This figure is a little larger and obviously these are the largest figures, these three. So really we've actually Everything looks to be going okay. We've resolved our issue with these cars. Now we can tell they're cars, but we don't have to worry that they're out in the open and not looking as great as we want them to. Now we're gonna go and start doing a few more details here. Um, let's try to put in our um, street lighting here. So we'll do some of our street lighting. So this one here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna slide my hand up the paper. Then I'm going to do a loop-de-loop -loop like that. And let's do one more over here. We have to be careful not to lean our hand in the paint over here. This is where you could spin the paper around. If you have your uh, watercolor paper set up on a, on a board like this, then you can move it around and then you can do like this, and then I won't be leaning into any fresh paint. And then I can just go down like this. And there's some... So we have that there. And we have a couple more signs up there. that and we'll do some put in some cadmium red for our street lights we'll go over here we'll do another bit of uh, street lights over here that there and again we'll do some cadmium red there so now we're just kind of getting into the fi finishing up mode here we're getting in our street lighting some of our um, pedestrian lights for our traffic and again not wanting to lean into the paint I'll spin my and I'll just do this like that And I think I can do the rest like so. So I'll just do a quick. This one looked a little bit, uh, that, that curve that I did there is not 100%, but it, it's passable, I think. So we're going to continue working and let's see what else we have here that we wanted to do. So we have the figures here. That looks good. Um, maybe some of the street signs. We'll use some lavender. Grade down with a little bit of the um, sepia tone. Maybe there's a couple other uh, street signs here as well. And there might be a few here. And then we'll make another street sign over here, maybe. 
And where can we... Let's see here. Okay, we have a street sign over there. And... I'm going to <clears throat> actually take a quick break now. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm thinking of just adding a few more details to some of the windows on this part, part of the um, buildings here in the middle distance. Maybe a few shadow lines just to give us a little more detail to this. This looks a little bit lacking some kind of some details, maybe some shadowing like over here. We could probably add some shadowing to this portion of the building there. Some here too as well. So that can give us some more volume to this here a little bit so that it looks a little more like it has some shadowing and so I would say the lights coming from this side from the left so this section here we could go even darker Sometimes it feels a little bit difficult to go darker, but... That'll look better when it dries. And then we can do the same over here. Rinse off my brush, dry it off a little bit, and just do a little bit of damp brush to feather that shadow out a little bit. All right, so that, that looks pretty good. And splashes in there all right so we're really starting to really see the rest of the painting look good and I'll put a little bit of shadow on that that light there uh, that light looked a little bit uh, not so pleasant, so let me put the some wash on that, maybe some darker wash.
and the key is not to go too much fussing around to, with it because that can be a problem too. We did we did repair some or we did make our modifications to our painting here to make it look better. And uh, I'm adding some green around the painting here. I think I'm going to just I had green over here. So I just wanted to add a little green here and there. This way it looks good. It, a little bit of green wash just to tie it all in together. Okay, and we'll come back just in a few seconds, just a few more uh, details, and I think that'll be, we'll have it, we'll have everything. We want to do some highlights on the tops of the figures. Uh, and I forgot to mention, if you haven't subscribed, hey, please subscribe, come back. Next time, all you have to do is hit that uh, subscribe button below. Uh, also, if you want, you can click on the notification bell. That will alert you when my new videos come out. We're making new videos once a week, at least minimum. Sometimes we're doing two and three videos a week. And we're doing all types of subject matter, everything watercolors. So everything's, it's going to all be watercolor methods, techniques. Um, we cover all kinds of subject matter as well. Figures, flowers. We're doing uh, landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes. Um, all the watercolor uh, information you want. It's right here on this channel. So you come on back, just hit that subscribe button. And you'll be in great shape. And we're going to come back again for just one more segment. We're going to get some highlights on these figures for some interesting sunlight effect. And maybe we'll just add one or two more details to the um, buildings. So uh, we'll see you in just a second. Okay, we're back again. And again, if we're just... Uh, we're trying not to go with too many details, of course. That can always be an issue. But I think here we're just about at the perfect spot. And... Take a look at this, and when you look at my painting, try to see if you think it needs more detail, less detail. Um, you can kind of decide. Some people, you might like more detail than this, or some of you might say it's too much already, too many details already, or some might say, yeah, it's just about right. That's per, you know, that's the way we should look at our artwork and other people's artwork is try to, you know, see what you like, and then you can kind of feel feel it out and then you create the same painting or something similar and then you add or delete details as you would, would like, as you would think would look better for your own tastes. So here, I think it's pretty much almost 100% complete. While we were away, I did do a few more things. I added um, some green awnings here, just very lightly, some green awnings. I added a few orange um, uh, dollops of paint here and there, some orange, just cadmium orange just to add a little more color to the uh, composition, make it a little more interesting. Um, I'm trying to think, I added a little more darks to this uh, building here, and some darks to the windows here to make this a little more interesting, closer. You know, this is the middle distance here, so I felt that what we had before this was a little too sparse on the darks. So you can see here it gets lighter, and that looks fine because this, these buildings here on this streetscape, they're further in the distance. So we don't want too many details on these buildings and too much dark uh, tonal values. We want to keep our dark tonal values close by, close up, where you're going to, which would be natural that you would see it that way. And uh, other than that, I think it's looking good. We'll, we'll add a, um, maybe we'll add a, just a flag up top here. So I'm going to add some green, and uh, if I have any white, I'll take some titanium white. And when I do this flag here, it'll be an Italian flag, let's say. Let's say we pretend we're in Italy. Well, when we do our flag, we just do it very loosely and quickly. We don't want to make it look uh, 
like we were working on it for, you know, 20 minutes. It's just got to be a quick, um, like that. Good enough. And then we add just the, the bit of the, So that's uh, looking good. We'll do some highlights, titanium white, yellow ochre. Mix it up in the top portion like that. And then we want to have a dry brush for the most part. If you have water in the top of the tube, try to take the water out of the top of the tube and then go back in and get the white and we'll just do some highlights here on the tops of the um, figures we're gonna work left to right so we don't lean into the paint everything's dry here right now in the painting and then here we'll some top there then if you run out of paint, go back in, get some more paint. So this way it's a nice kind of a flow to the paint, to the highlights. We don't want to go like that. And if one doesn't come out good, that's okay. We can go back and correct that. It's not a big deal. So you might see a couple that are just not looking perfect. No big deal. Blot up what you can. Go back in. We get some darks. Uh, raw umber. And we just do that. And the same here. Adding the lights can be very difficult. Sometimes that's why we want to just quickly do it like that. That's okay. That looks good. And you can add darks underneath it if you want. If you don't like, if it's too thick, if, you look, if it looks too thick, no big deal. These came out good over here. That came out good too. And um, I think that looks good. So that, that was really all I wanted to do was the uh, highlights on top of the figures. That was important. I wanted to do that. We did the flag. We did um, a little bit of green awnings, Viridian green, to just add a little bit of that feel of awnings on the city streets here, along the ground level. And other than that, we really stuck to our game plan. We tried to do everything from the beginning like we planned. Then we had one issue with the cars. We resolved that by adding in a couple more figures, which looks fine. I'll move the... Uh, paint out of the way here and we'll peel off the tape we'll see it looks a little better with the uh, border around it
And we'll zoom in. And that's the finished painting. I hope you liked this uh, video. Again, please subscribe. We're having fun like this all the time at my channel here. So um, we're going to also create more wet on wet glazing techniques like this. We're going to be doing these in the future as well. So we're going to do a la prima direct pr approach. We're going to do glazing techniques like this. We'll do more um, drawings, pen drawings, pencil drawings. So we're going to start mixing up our routine here a little more so everyone gets um, a little practice on a little bit of everything and this way it'll just help you to uh, create more beautiful paintings and that's what we're all about. Let's uh, create more beautiful art and we'll have a lot more fun and, and enjoy. So uh, until I see you again, thanks again for coming by and watching and we'll see you on the next video.